Let's talk BCS Championship football. Let's talk NCAA and where they're going to go next as Alabama beats LSU. Rocky Long, head coach, San Diego State. Talk to the Aztecs with us here on Sportswatch. I know you love defense. I bet you were on the edge of your chair watching the schemes and scams that Nick Saban pulled off last night against LSU. Could you believe what you were seeing for four quarters, Rocky? Well, I, I couldn't really believe it. I thought that uh, obviously Alabama dominated the line of scrimmage and on both sides of the ball. And when you dominate the line of scrimmage, uh, the side that's dominating the game, their skill guys really get to show off, and the guys that aren't dominating the game, their their skill guys don't have a chance. So I thought that they completely dominated the line of scrimmage. I also thought that the Baylor quarterback really had a poor game. Five weeks to game plan, more than 44 days to look at historically everything LSU did. Were you of the opinion that five weeks was the difference maker and why Saban was able to dominate? No, I I don't think so. I I think that uh, both teams had basically the same amount of time to prepare and and when you get to bowl games, I've been in several bowl games where you have uh, two, three, four weeks. Sometimes your team gets a little stale. Obviously, Alabama didn't. Uh, maybe LSU got a little stale. Alabama had a little bit more incentive to play well. Uh, I, I don't think the extra time benefited either side of the ball. Defense ran sideline to sideline. They had answers for everything LSU did. Were you amazed at the the complete athleticism of the entire Alabama roster? Well, that's what that's what I was talking about earlier. The the guys up front, the defensive linemen up front, and maybe when they put linebackers on the line of scrimmage, they completely dominated the line of scrimmage. So none of the blockers could get up to the second level to the linebackers or the safeties or even the corners were whipping their wide receivers too. But uh, none of those guys could get up and block the second level. So Alabama is so skilled and so talented back there at linebacker and at safety. Those guys could run to the ball and knock the heck out of the ball carrier and. I thought that um, LSU tried to use the option a little bit to slow him down, and then that's where I really thought the quarterback played poorly. A guy on the line of scrimmage can sit there and slow play the quarterback and then run the pitch guy down. That's a quarterback not planting his foot in the ground and going up the field. Rocky Long with us. Talk to the Aztecs. His assessment coming out of the BCS championship game, Bama roll tied over LSU. I would have thought going into the game, that Bama would have pounded the ball because those two running backs between them, Trent Richardson and Eddie Lacy, had almost 2,400 yards on the ground, more than six yards per carry, and yet they came out radically different. And McCarron looked so different as a throwing quarterback last night than he did four or five weeks ago. Were you surprised? Uh, I was a little bit surprised, uh, but but I, I also have great respect for LSU's defense, and they're pretty good up front, too. But what they did with the play-action pass was really slow the pass rush down. And then I thought the Alabama front five played better than, obviously, the LSU front five did on offense. They gave the quarterback some time. And then what you saw was defensive backs and man-to-man coverage and great receivers. Athletically, probably their DBs are the same as the receivers. But if they have time, the receivers know where they're going. DBs don't know where they're going. If the quarterback has time, eventually they beat man-to-man coverage. Rocky, they gave up 384 yards, but I thought LSU defense just played heroically considering the whole damn game was in the the shadow of their goal line. I I totally agree. I, I thought that they were putting so many bad positions and kept making them kick field goals. I actually thought that LSU was going to make a run at the end, but uh, obviously Alabama had the best team that night. I used the word earlier in the show, Rocky, this became a thinking man's game. I, I really thought that Saban beat LSU with the formations and movements and, and what they created offensively and what they did defensively to the point it made LSU tentative. Give me the coach's perspective. I think with the play action, I think they have such a great running game, and I think LSU was intent on stopping the running game and then using play action, bootlegs, taking the quarterback out of the pocket, moving the pocket around with play action pass really slowed them down in coverage. And then they had some guys open. The quarterback did a great job. He was very accurate with the football. You notice that he was completing some balls, but those guys were getting hit right away. And I I do think – that they had LSU on their heels a little bit uh, because of the play action and moving the pocket. And for a sophomore quarterback, I thought Alabama's quarterback played really well. Let me ask you this about your philosophy. And, again, you you did it at New Mexico. You took the Lobos to bowl games. Obviously, San Diego State's gone to back-to-back bowl games. And you had a long run at UCLA and Oregon State. 
but this was a national championship, 74,000. How do you prevent your players and your team from getting overwhelmed by the event? You know, you would be. I, I would be very nervous about that if the teams hadn't been in those situations before. But normally, national championship game, those guys have been in those situations before. In fact, these two teams were in the exact, maybe worse situation when they played each other the first time. Alabama should have had the advantage playing at home. It was. Uh, I think they had two weeks to prepare for each other. Uh, everybody knew it was going to be for the Southeast Conference Championship. And those Alabama and LSU and teams like them play in that situation so often, you would think that the situation itself did not change the game. Uh, what I think was Alabama was more ready to play than LSU, and that could be psychological. That could be LSU got rusty over the time that they had off. It could be a thousand different things, but obviously Alabama was the best team last night. Rocky, you have relationships with a lot of coaches, a lot of places. What makes Nick Saban great? I think, number one, uh, you know, he didn't have the success that, in the pros that he had in college. So I think what he does is does a great job of evaluating and did a great job of recruiting so he has really good players. And then, obviously, he does an outstanding job of developing those players from when he gets them as freshmen until they get to be seniors. They're much better football players after he's worked with them for three or four years. I think he, I think he's really good at strategy, too. I think he has a real good feel on defense for taking advantage of the other team's weaknesses. But what I think is key is that he's a teacher. I, I think, first of all, he recruits really well. And second of all, he develops players. He's a real good teacher. So when you get to a game like that, he has as good a team as anybody else. Rocky, one final question for you. This morning, starting at about 10 a.m. in New Orleans, the commissioners of the BCS have begun three days of meetings. They are going to try to formulate a different type of plan for a postseason playoff. And I don't know what it should be. You and I both know the history and the legacy and the love of the Rose Bowl and the Sugar Bowl and the Orange Bowl and the Fiesta Bowl, etc., is there a perfect formula so you don't wreck the Rose Bowl, but yet we do have a national championship? If if you had the tie-breaking vote, what would you propose? And I, I think that if I had the tie-breaking vote, I'd, I'd vote for a 16-team playoff because I think that's the only way to be fair. I, last night, Alabama was the best team, but I didn't think Alabama deserved to be there. LSU would beat them, beat them at home. I, I didn't think that you should have to play a team twice in one year. Now, if you have a playoff system a la the NFL, you, you could play teams twice in one year, and, and then it's legit. You actually got yourself by being a good enough football team to be in the playoffs. So I I would go for a 16-team playoff just like they do in high school, just like they do in every other division of football other than NCAA Division One. Now, I think the commissioners are talking about a plus one. Uh, that that just makes it four teams have a chance instead of the whole the whole group of us having a chance. Right, one other question: If not if not Bama, who would you have put in against LSU? Who deserved to go? Considering Oregon had gotten beat, Oklahoma State had one loss, Stanford had a couple. I think there was extenuating circumstances with Oklahoma State. Now I would have put Oklahoma State in there if it had been my vote. Well said, Coach. I appreciate it. We'll talk to you come recruiting time, Rocky. As always, thank you. All right, appreciate it. Thanks.